Welcome back to the Hills Property Panel. The purpose is to provide factual information about the Hills District and the property market. Today, introducing Dan Pym from Loan Market. He's been in the mortgage broking industry for over 20 years. A local that knows the area well and the market very well. And Stu Benson, welcome back. Benson Auctions, number one auctioneer for the Hills District. Good to be back. Thanks for coming in, guys. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so um, on this segment of the, uh, of the property panel, um, as you would have seen in our previous episodes, we're talking to experts in their field about not only what they do and do well, but how that's going to affect people locally here in the Hills District. So uh, to have Dan Pim here to talk all things uh, lending and broking in the environment, I guess at the moment, um, pretty hard to save a deposit. And we have a lot of people trying to, trying to get that deposit together, um, but you can save for months and years and still not even get there. How are young couples doing it at the moment? I think it's really tough for first home buyers in particular because they're just starting out in their career. Perhaps their incomes aren't you know, what they want it to be yet. And oftentimes they're renting and just saving for a deposit. You know, Hopefully you only ever have to do that once, mm -hmm. but it's a big deal. And uh, with property prices where they are, you could save for a whole year and, and just pay for the stamp duty. Yep. So it is tough for first home buyers, uh, but there are a range of government incentives to help and even the lenders are on board with, with different types of loans that can help people get into their first home. So in terms of where do they start, should, should approaching a bank or approaching a broker, are there things that you can do in terms of a blueprint to, to help a young couple who've never been down this path before get themselves closer to property ownership? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the most important thing is to be prepared. Um, I mean, 70% of clients use a broker these days, but whether you're going to use a broker or talk to the bank directly, what you want to do is you really want to get pre-approved. Um, a loan pre-approval sort of gives you that ammunition you need. So when you go to an auction and you go to an open home, you know whether you're kidding yourself or mm -hmm. whether you actually have that capacity to buy that property, yeah. especially when you start talking to agents who ask you to submit offers. Yeah. You need to really know 100% are yeah. you good to go or not. So mm -hmm. get a loan pre-approved, understand what the repayments are going to be, understand what your maximum purchase price is going to be, you know, understand what deposits required, and yep. that's going to make the rest of the process a lot easier. Okay, and so what about instances where despite saving and your best intentions of getting everything that you need in order, you are still falling short? Um, guarantors have been around for quite some time, but I don't think a lot of people know exactly how the function works, how long the person needs to be a guarantor for. Um, we've got a lot of parents here in the Hills District who have a substantial amount of equity in their property, um, and it can certainly help uh, younger people get into the marketplace. How do they activate that? Yeah, so. Back in the day, you know, 20 years ago, doing a guarantee was a big deal because mm. the parents, all of their assets were on the line. Yep. And that was a really big call. Whereas nowadays, the banks have these products, they're called a limited guarantee, mm -hmm. a family guarantee. So if you're short on a deposit by 100 grand, for example, well, the, the guarantee is limited to that amount only. Right. And what that does is it, it's a tremendous help for clients because it might help them be able to buy a property earlier. It actually helps the parents because the parents can help the clients, you know, the kids without even having to give them any cash. Right, yeah. And so, and all the while avoiding what is often a really expensive mortgage insurance, yep. which is like a one-off penalty for having less than a 20% deposit. Right. Okay, so the guarantor, if it's to the right amount, is going to avoid having to pay an unnecessary duty on top of all the other duties that, that a young couple are, are looking at paying. Yeah, for sure. And it's, oftentimes the clients have a deposit, but they might have a deposit and want to buy a property that needs work. And so they yeah. could perhaps take a, a, a bigger guarantee with mm -hmm. the parent's permission and then use that money to, um, to fund a renovation or to keep some money aside for a safety net. Whereas if you've got no help and yeah. you're a first home buyer, it's normally you push all your chips into the middle and you're yep. all in without a, without a buffer. And so that would, that would be a higher risk than you know, getting a guarantor loan. And is this a, a typical buyer or a buyer type that you're seeing um, with inquiries on, on Chateau? Mm, good question. There's been an increased amount of guarantors as the market prices have been increasing over time. Um, all across the area, so specifically Castle Hill, um, the median price is now 2.1. Um, and for apartments, it's around a million dollars. I feel partly responsible. I'm, I'm sorry about that as an auctioneer. Yeah. Well, yeah, sorry. auctioneer all the properties, you're pushing it up. Sorry. But to give it some sort of uh, balance and rhythm, um, the parents are saying, well, they want to aspire to get into that area yeah. for all the many good things. So then they're saying, well, what are the options? 
the parents will come in and they'll be thinking about buying the properties. That's at the level of thought that goes in. Well, we'll buy the properties for them. And we're saying, well, there are other options available yeah. as well. You don't have to, as you've said, put all of everything on the line, Dan. So yeah. that's the options of the guarantor. And it's starting to be talked about. I think um, people are still wanting to you know, look at different areas, but then they'll come back to the hills for what we've got on offer as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look, I think if anybody like us grew up in the Hills District, um, when it's time to, to leave the nest and to start your own journey, uh, you do want to stay local if you can. It's certainly not an area that offers everything. Uh, but it is good for the viewers of this segment to know that if you are in that category of first home buyer or looking to level up and go from, uh, from renting into a house or from an apartment into a house, uh, whatever it might be in terms of your plans to ascend the property ladder, there are, there are options that um, are going to give you a little bit more borrowing power um, off the back mm. of mum and dad's astute investment maybe 20, 30, 40 years ago. If I could say hills. into that yeah. nice area as well that yeah. they're wanting to get into. Yeah. Well, there's been a lot of talk about interest rates, good, bad, there are other. It's just a fact of what's happening in the marketplace. And it, how is it affecting loan volumes or people's uh, feelings about what to do at the moment? Yeah, I think we've come off the back of the lowest interest rates on record. Mm. And despite the RBA uh, saying that rates won't increase till 2022, they've re increased quite quickly. Yeah. So there's a lot of fear in the market. And I think the reality is, is that most clients normally look to fix their rate if there's any rate rises. Yeah. But unfortunately, fixed rates started going up last year. Yeah. And if at the time, uh, variable rates were 2%, fixed rates were 2%. Now variable rates are over three, but fixed rates are five and a half. Yeah. So mm. look, there's really not any you know, benefit to fixing at the moment, unless you're prepared to pay a big penalty, which right. clients aren't really doing. Yeah. So what is the benefit or the thing that people can be doing right now? Yeah, I mean, the biggest in. hack that you can do right now is to go to your bank and renegotiate. Mm -hmm. um, if you go there and, and ask them for a better deal and say, look, you're about to shop around, you want them to look after you, you thought you'd come here first because you're a loyal client. Oftentimes they will renegotiate and yep. you can have, you can save a lot of money and those savings can really offset these uh, recent rate rises. Right. I see. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It's nice that the banks are actually receptive on having that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to engage it. Yeah. They're not going to yeah. reach out yeah. and be like, by the way, hey. yeah. but yes. if you, if you engage it and you use the yeah. right words, mm. which is really just to say, look, you're offering new clients this rate and yet I'm paying mm. this rate. Yeah. That's often all it takes. Mm. If you yeah. ask, um, you shall receive. There we go. <laughs> and the volume of inquiries to loan market yourself, Dan, uh, or the volume of processing um, the loans or people getting ready, how has that been? How does it look? Like up, down, there, other? Well, loan volumes have been mm. crazy for a couple of years right. now, driven by really cheap interest rates and really strong property demand. I think there mm. is a period now where it's the, it's the middle of winter and this is not typically a time where you see huge volumes. Yeah. Mm. But I also think that the clients that missed out during those peaks of last year, it is a great opportunity for them if they've got the confidence to go ahead to maybe get something that they would have missed out on last mm -hmm. year. Yeah. Right, and, so. and failing that, you know, typically people list and sell in, in spring and summer. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. yeah. And Stu, I guess that's people buying and selling on their terms when they're ready anyways, or uh, if the market has taken a little bit of the heat out, whatever segment it is, first home buyers, sure. downsizers, yep. um, they can get themselves aligned and ready to bid and um, be a part of it. Look, I think yeah. the throwback to, to Dan's original point is getting all of those, uh, those ducks in alignment and everything in a row uh, so that you can make that offer because mm. an agent is going to ask you, if you are interested, what would you be prepared to pay? But and can, the, you uh, can you sign, can, mm. you, can you make that offer? Um, typically, and I guess uh, this is a how long is a piece of string question, but typically, somebody who's got a regular doc home loan application, how long are we talking in terms of getting that pre-approval? A couple of days. Okay. Yeah, in as little as a couple of days. Yeah. I wouldn't leave it a couple of days before the option no, to, no. to that ask. Was, that was the point. Yeah. yeah, so they normally take a few days to get pre-approved. Yep. Mm. And we're talking, you know, fully assessed, so a real yep. pre-approval. And they're normally valid for three months when some lenders are valid for six months. Right. But the important thing to note is the clients who were pre-approved last year thinking they've got a certain budget, they really need to double check the figures because with the interest rates going up, borrowing capacities have come down yeah. and you don't want to get caught out. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we've been experiencing that. We've had people who quite literally, um, before an RBA announcement, have said that they are keen and we're going to see them at auction. And then come the first Tuesday of the month, it, it turns out that come that Friday or Saturday, they're out because mm. we've just hit that limit of what they can afford. Right. So really doing your sums and I guess engaging somebody who knows their stuff is, is extremely paramount. Yeah, you, it's really important. You, there's, a, there's a point in there which is about at the limits and um, uh, interest rates and then the markets and people are saying, well, are people going to start to default? Yeah. Uh, I don't want to talk doom and gloom, but let's put it on the table. What are the facts and what's happening around the area? With How, how much at risk are we in the Hills District? What's actually happening? There is a perception in the market that people are really gung-ho when they're borrowing. Mm. The reality is that um, the 30-day arrears rate for home loans is less than half of 1%. Yep. And true, there are people that can be caught out, but if, you're, if the bank is approving you with an interest rate of say 3.2% at the moment, they're stress testing you on a rate of 6.5%. So yep. there is a buffer there. Right. And most people are, are conservative. When they're gonna make a big decision, they don't, they don't just say, oh, we'll figure out a way. You know, yeah, they wanna right. know. And, mm. and when a market is, when rates do have the potential to rise, the best thing is to get a quote on where's, where the rates are, are now and yeah, then right. where they're likely to be in the Good next point. two to three years. Yeah. So the takeaways are the health check on the home loan, um, the guarantor is an option. Yeah. And then get yourself ready, yeah, which will only take three to four days from a broker. And if you're, so, currently, you're currently a mortgage holder, um, ask the question, shop around. You don't ask, you don't get. For sure. And uh, your bank certainly, I'd imagine, wants to retain your business and retain your mortgage for the duration of it. Um, start that conversation and see what's available. Yeah, for sure. You've got nothing to lose. Yeah. Good. Thanks for coming in, Dan. My pleasure. Thanks, Stu. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.